This is simplicity. Now, now sometimes we have to be a little bit tricky with people. Like with our 2012 videos. We're not telling everything. Not right in the beginning. Because they can't hear it. They couldn't hear it. If we, t we you know, we, I started out, <laughs> when I first realized that I'm going to have to preach down, lower, uh, to where the people are. Because when I started this Krishna consciousness bit, back in the 60s, people were here. And when I started preaching on my own in 2002, the people were like here. By now, people are like, <laughs> hello? Is anybody there? Um, it's hard to see where they are from where I am at. Uh, it's hard to understand what the, what the way they're thinking. But anyway, my first experiment was the introductory seminar videos. Remember the introductory seminar? It starts out from chant this mantra, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. I thought that was like really like rock bottom. <laughs> 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 but actually, that's like higher than most people can can grasp. Uh, so we had to go even lower. We had to go, you know, 2012. You know, like uh, you know, the Matrix. You know, take the blue pill or the red pill. You know, I mean, we had to like use popular culture to introduce some very very basic idea. We're in a trap, and we have to get out. Right. How are we going to get out? Okay, we have the knowledge. But you have to come and you have to approach it. It's not as easy as taking a pill. You know, we introduce all these ideas, but we don't we don't give the specifics because if we started to say, Okay, Neo, you gotta chant this mantra. <laughs> Here's your beads. <laughs> See, that, that that's hard to put across in popular culture. The way people are today is so degraded. So we have to be a little tricky. Or when we start talking about very, very, very elevated, advanced subjects of devotional service. You know, like for example, Krishna is dancing with the gopis. Who are the gopis? Oh, well, they happen to be these girls who are like married to these other guys. What? Krishna is dancing with other men's wives in the forest in the middle of the night? Oh, yeah, and then he, uh, well, um, after that, uh, other things happen. <laughs> and then they're all back in their beds by morning, and nobody, uh, nobody knows anything. <laughs> well, we have to be a little tricky and not say everything. See? Because it's very hard for the average person to understand that because this world is a reflection of the spiritual world, you see, the things that are low and considered immoral in this world are very high in the spiritual world. You see? So the taste, the enjoyment that Krishna gets uh, from this uh, lawless love of the gopis, you see, where they actually break all the principles of religiosity and morality to be with him. See, the it's, it's understood that if a woman is willing to give up her religious principles to be with a paramour, a lover, that this is a very intense kind of, of, of loving attachment. See, It's much stronger, for example, than a woman who gets married according to principles of scripture and morality and so on, uh, because that's just a conventional kind of relationship. So the unconventional, and the more unconventional the relationship is, the sweeter and more intense and more enjoyable it is. You see? So Krishna has these various kinds of very unusual relationships with his devotees in the spiritual world. But those same kind of relationships when they're reflected in the material energy are very sinful and degrading. You see? So when, when Krishna is dancing with the gopis in the, in the spiritual world, that's wonderful. That's like, that's the height of spirituality. That's the height of, of Krishna consciousness. But in this material world, if you go dancing with somebody else's wife, you're asking for trouble. <laughs> <laughs> 
you see? Um, but it's very hard to explain these things to people who have no realization. So we have to be a little bit cautious about who we expose these truths to. Because if people get them before they're advanced enough to appreciate them, they're liable to make offenses. See, and if they make offenses, then they simply uh, destroy their uh, relationship of trust with the spiritual master, and they lose their whatever advancement that they have got. So, uh, when I'm talking to you, yeah, okay, uh, when we start to speculate about these different relationships that Krishna has with his devotees, we can get ourselves in big, big trouble uh, because this is very, very sacred and sensitive matter. And so uh, we have to know how to present these things properly so that they are pitched at the level that people can hear so according to their ability to understand. So that means that, um, yeah, we have to be simple. But simple can mean that we, it's not that we withhold the truth, but that we give the truth in little doses. And as a person gets higher and higher and higher, we give more and more and more and more. And the challenge then at each stage is to know what the person can assimilate, what they can digest, what they can understand. Uh, and for the people who, who are personally associated with me, you know, it's very tough for them because I've engaged 24 hours a day in this very confidential relationship with Krishna, you know. So if somebody were to judge that by some material standpoint, you know, they would think, wow, this is really weird. You know, why is the guy sleeping with a lion? I mean, that's weird. <laughs> why is the lion hiding things? <laughs> yeah, why is the lion hiding stuff on me? <laughs> he plays all kinds of tricks. You can't imagine. Anyway, this is not something that is for public consumption. You know? It's not appropriate. You know, do I ask you about the details of your relationship with your girlfriend? It's like, I don't want to know. You know really. <laughs> I do not want to know. But, so similarly, you shouldn't expect me to be terribly forthcoming about the details of my love affair with Krishna. Simply none of your business. Uh, and it would ruin it for me if I was to reveal that. And it would also ruin it for you. Because you have to discover your own relationship with Krishna. And I'm not going to get in the way and say, oh, it should be like mine. Or somebody, or somebody, it says here in this book, it's supposed to be like this. No. No. That's not right. You have to discover your own relationship with Krishna according to your particular realization, according to your specific spiritual qualities, which nobody can know but you. That's why we don't have Siddha Pranali in this lineage. That's why the spiritual master does not tell the disciple, okay, this is your spiritual identity. This is your eternal service in the spiritual world. Okay? We don't follow that. The Radhakun Babaji's, they're, they're doing that. But in our, from our point of view, they're imitationists. Uh, they're trying to say, you're, in, you're a manjari, you're a gopi, you know, you're a cow, you're this, you're that. Um, I know some people who would make good cows, but that's, that's another question. We don't tell people. We don't try to interfere. We don't try to intervene in the relationship between the soul and Krishna. We encourage, we instruct, we give hints, we give tips, we share our experience. Uh, we try to, to uh, give people the tools that they can use to uncover and explore their own personal relationship with Krishna. But we don't try to come between them and tell them, oh yeah, this is your relationship, or this is your service, or you know, this is who you are in the spiritual world. That's, that, I don't think that's fair. Huh? They should discover that for themselves. 
and they should have the freedom that that relationship can be, you know, pretty much anything. Uh, who are we to say? You know, it depends. A person has to have integrity. You know, this simplicity also, this principle applies to a person's integrity, that when they do discover their relationship with Krishna, that they can be honest about it with their god brothers and, and other people. You know, like, I can't discuss this subject with my god brothers. My god brothers are not open to discussing this subject. They will not hear about it. You know, they want to put everything on some political platform. Oh, you weren't recommended by the GBC Guru Committee to be a spiritual master, so we won't recognize your initiations. And blah, blah, blah. So what? <laughs> you know, I mean, really. 